And so while we are waiting for music to come into our reality here in Zoom room number seven at theconversation.cc, Gaia's Zoom room on June 1st, 2021. I just want to um, express my, uh, my happiness in having a guest join us. Jao Estelita is from Brazil and he came to us through Trove, uh, one of the people involved with uh, Kiko Lab. And so uh, we are going to hear from Jao a little bit later. Uh, he's okay. going to show us some pictures of his home. But I would like to have the moment of beautiful music so that we can come into the room in a good way. Almost there. <laughs> Almost there. And here I the am. pictures have to do, come to. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's lovely. Thank you so much for doing this for us, Fim. Oh, no problem. I love music. Divinely designed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's... it's Really, the music, the, the medicine in my soul. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. What I liked about the music today is that it seemed like it was a going forward, kind of a joyful kind of a, and honestly, I need that right now. Yeah, you got it. Because my heart is broken. Now, Kamloops, BC is in the news. I don't know if you're aware. I don't get news. What's that? I don't get on the news either. Uh, but yesterday, Joanne, my roommate, mentioned mm -hmm. something about something that happened. And I saw something that brought it to mind today. So I went and looked into the news. And what I heard was that there has been a find of a mass grave of children at the residential school. I heard about that. Yeah. My uh, Alex told me. Yeah. Um, and so I have looked at this from the point of view that I have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have been searching for ways to weave our peoples together for a very, very long time and have felt so impotent and unable to rise to the, the need. Um, Ximena, you just got back. Um, I just ta uh, spoke about the 215 children that were found in a mass grave in the um, Indian Residential School here in Kamloops, my hometown. And so, um, you know, my philosophy is that nothing happens for no reason. And sometimes the reasons are beyond us. And, and sometimes we need to use our imaginations to figure out how what the purpose is, how could this be? If everything is perfect, how can this be? And 
And I think about the Our Heart Gardens idea and its purpose, which is to weave people together and to help us heal from the traumas of the past and to feed our children and each other in a good way that is outside of business and money and to enable our cultures to be deepened and enjoyed. And my heart breaks. And yet I know that it is possible that I am holding the answer. And so I, <laughs> I got an email today from the Camelot's Food Policy Council, of which I am a part, and the, um, the Butler Urban Garden that I go and volunteer at is also a part of that. And last year, I put the proposal together for a pilot project to, through Robin McLean, who had been uh, invited, uh, employed to do um, um, an assessment of the food uh, situation in Kamloops. And nothing happened with that. And it, it was okay. I mean, that's you know, everything is okay. And if it is okay, what do you do? And so um, I allowed that to, um, to be what it was. And today I got uh, a reminder that I didn't know that tomorrow is um, a meeting of the Kamloops Food Policy Council. And if you would like to any, ask any questions or anything, please put it forward. And so I jumped into action. And I would like to share the words that I shared with them. So, um, it starts out, oh, let me find the right one. Sent, let me go to. It was sent to Bonnie and I said, dear Bonnie, thank you for your invitation to contact the Kamloops Food Policy Council through you. The tragic news of 215 reasons for kind, compassionate, helpful action without delay prompts me to offer the following suggestion. <clears throat> It was originally offered to Robin McLean in response to her KFPC assessment report. Now, I believe the time for a pilot project has passed. We need to do something now that shows we are sincere in our shared pain and shame and in our desire to weave our peoples together in a good way. The Butler Urban Farm is across the street from the food bank and close to the Interior Indian Friendship Society on Palm Street, which is mentioned in the OG's Our Heart Gardens draft business plan. The Interior Indian Friendship Society operated an urban garden until about 2015, but closed to consolidate their staff on Palm Street, closer to the population they serve. That undertaking included many aspects of OGs, access to services, community, classes, good work, food and bus tickets in return for participation, etc. Active for more than a decade, they were an established part of the residential community in Brocklehurst, a part of Kamloops. Empowering this society to be part of a new garden and Kamloops Food Policy Council to widen their scope and be part of a global sustainability movement can help us move towards reconciliation. They know what's necessary to grow and prepare traditional foods and how to honor the land. But the land has suffered and the, world, and the weather is changing. Traditional methods need augmentation. 
while we learn new old skills and find new ways that work to feed our community, we heal and learn to make decisions together to help the land and each other recover and more. The work of the indigenous groups already engaged by the KFPC is significant. It has the potential to lead great change as Robin McLean said in her review. Honoring the work they have done for their own people by offering a place and people, professionals and volunteers to work with and asking for their guidance and participation in learning how to meet the needs of the entire community, we can create an OG's facility and show the world how sincere we are about reconciliation. While unable to offer sufficient reparations, we can offer to share the creation of a way of life that weaves us all together, honors our cultures and the planet we share. To address the challenges we face and help everyone achieve food sovereignty, other agencies can be invited to participate in the program. Working with eWay Services, list of organizations in Kamloops, all religious groups and the university, we can engage many people in establishing the solution we need in the shortest possible time. Many hands make light work. Maybe we could also convert Sahali Mall to an indoor OGs as described in the draft business plan and here. And I provide a link to the four families in downtown. I invite you to join us in Gaia's Zoom room to talk about OGs at theconversation.cc on Tuesdays from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time. It arose from my participation in Ubiquity University's Humanity Rising, the associated othernetworks.org and the chat action group, which is the action part of chat people. They get me every weekday morning. Gaia's Zoom room is also open on Thursdays, same time, same place to enjoy sacred space time together. I'm very impressed with the organizations and people gathered by the KFPC in the past. In particular, Don Morrison of the Wild Salmon Caravan and I have been Facebook friends for years. It would be a pleasure to know her better. I've also been honored to be part of the Butler Urban Farm Garden and was pleased to see their sign that seems to herald our united action. We are joined at the heart and their sign has a heart right in the center of it. This is an effective strategy for humanity to more than endure climate change. The vision is bigger than just feeding people. It encompasses thriving generations of diverse peoples in interconnected communities around the world. Kamloops must respond locally, creatively, and with passion. We have been given an urgent and strategic imperative and opportunity. We need, can be, a good example in this hurtful healing time. The KFPC holds the keys. Sincerely, Shannon MacArthur. And I sent a copy of that text to Kevin, the, the garden manager, with a little comment at the bottom that said that four leaf clover was very powerful. We found a four leaf clover when we were there the other day, a whole patch of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it seemed like a whole patch of them. There were a lot there, there were at least three and that we didn't look for long. And so this opportunity is before going before the, uh, the, the Food Policy Council tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I, you know, there were like 120 different residential schools across Canada. And, and I know we're not different. 
the scope of this. You know, we talk about genocide and the, the we don't, when we think about genocide, we think of a people's, a, you know, a, a, a group of people. We don't think about the children. At least I didn't. I, I thought about the tribes and the fact that the children were taken away and, and that the parents were bereft of the joy of their children and of the purpose in life that children give you. And of course, the society, their, their civilization fell apart. Of course it did. They had no reason to live. They held on because of their prophecies that talk about this time. And it's time for us to step forward into making those prophecies come true. The 500 years are over. We don't have to live with that. We can change that. Know it for what it was. And go on in a good way. Together. Weaving a world that works for everyone. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Jimena. Oh, I'm really shocked. Um, I was supposed to translate some documents from Chief Phil who was given going to give them to me directly because he knew about my labor when I translated documents for the embassy of Azerbaijan where I worked for in a campaign that demanded the recognition of a genocide. And I am specialized on genocide, I can say that because I studied every single genocide and how it happened and why it happened and I, it, it was so impactful and so horrible, we can say, that I started lighting candles for every single person that I was translating these documents. In. And suddenly when I had the mission of being the representative of of the campaign for the recognition of the genocide. What happened to me was, uh, it was like an illumination, we can say, because uh, the kids during the genocide of Hojali in Azerbaijan were slaughtered in a very horrible way. And I was like so heartbroken and then I thought, well, these little lives were worth it for understanding uh, that man needs to be the healer of men, not the wolf of men. Like Hobbes said, that man was the wolf of men. And right now is the time of men to be the healer of men. And I understood that those little souls um, were part of a big divine plan and a purpose. And when I was asked to put the pictures of the slaughtery and how it happened and explain it, and you know, like go again and again into this body of pain that we shouldn't, because Eckhart Tolle says that there is a body of pain. And if we are repeating this constantly on ourselves, it creates a footprint. And then a footprint becomes a behavior and is not helping at all. So what I got into conclusion was to work for the refugees who were alive. And this is the time to work for the parents that were not given justice, that were not allowed to bury 
their children. This is the time for the government uh, to understand this uh, in a big way and, and for humanity to wake up in so many uh, ways as possible in order to understand that if we still continue in being the wolf of man, uh, this is going to get us nowhere. We're going to eat ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. And you don't need to see that so graphically and a lot of years afterwards. Because if you see the people from Africa that is drowning in the seas, that is also a genocide. And it's a humanicide. And we should be working on this not happening again. Because those are our fellow beings. Yeah. But the people that remain is the one that needs the attention. The, the, the little souls, they are not here anymore. And it, this was like a big purpose. Like they give out their lives and we, we need to pray for them and and Light thank their candles, souls. You know? Thank and, their souls for being and, a part of this. Yeah, and being with the fathers who are, the, I guess the fathers, it's not even fathers, like maybe they're, because how many years are you talking back? Maybe it's the grandfathers or someone that survives them. Um, there are survivors alive and mm -hmm. living uh, and the, the children of the survivors are, uh, parents of children and the generations have been infected with this horrible wisdom, this horrible history uh, that has been hidden from everything. It's been hidden. And this is the time of revelations. Yes, We're and the and earth is going to throw up, you know, like <laughs> it's going, it's going to throw up so many things that we're about to discover because in the sea, there's going to be this big explosion of fish and every single life getting out. And we need to be aware. This is, this is the era of Aquarius, the, the age of Aquarius. And the discoveries would come out like the, the, the water is going to be spread and overflow. So uh, we better be aware because th these are warnings of how cruel we are being as human beings. Yeah, like Syria is, is, uh, is full of thumbs. It's full, full, it's full of thumbs. It's, uh, I'm sorry. It's a cemetery. It's a cemetery. Uh, Syria. It's it's a it's a, it's full of graves. Wow. It's it's full of people that hasn't even been buried. Yeah. And so, rather than immolating ourselves mm -hmm. in the the shame and the pain, I seek to acknowledge and stand on the shoulders of my ancestors uh, and reach for something that will heal us all. And the only way we can heal us all is for us all to be in conversation and to do good things together, to garden together, to, to do handicrafts together, to to talk about the beauty, to share the beauty and the joy of the children. Uh, this is what Our Heart Gardens was designed for. It's why I have kept beating that drum, why I've never set it down. Um, it's not my plan, it's Gaia's. I, I couldn't have come up with something like this all by myself. She's a part of this. She wants us to succeed and grow from our past and, and 
and, and emerge into the glory and wonder that is possible when we work together. Um, Thank you for being a part of my life. Um, struggling through this time uh, is, it can be very lonely. And uh, to have you guys as, as part of my support system, you guys are really special to me. And I so appreciate you being here and, and a part of my life. Thank you so much. I want people like you to have people like me and, and people like me to have people like you. I want people to have people and ears to listen and hearts to hold. Our heart gardens, oh geez, what would we be if we could create when we create? the fabric of humanity that includes us all and our ancestors and our descendants. And when we see the all that we are as one and a part of Gaia, our great mother, without whom life would not be possible here. Well, life would not be possible as we know it, something else would have happened because that is the way um, reality works. You know, at least, well, we create our reality, don't we? Yeah. There are other realities. Ah, I'm so grateful to be able to create a reality that holds the greater good. Thank you so much. I feel better for sharing it. So I'm going to now invite Joe and perhaps he's got, um, interesting things to distract us from um, bad things. <clears throat> Mark, take, take a minute here and uh, let Joe know that uh, we're very much about the truth here. And as in today, the truth is ugly, but we have many beautiful solutions here. And, and you know, some days are, are filled with good news. So it, it's, I, I don't want your first visit here to be, you know, over, well, overcome with, with yeah, overwhelming with that. But if you're not overwhelmed with this, you're not human. <laughs> Marco, thank you so much for saying so. And I want to underline that fact because I, that's why I keep coming back because you guys are always upbeat and always welcoming. I so I am so grateful for you. And Joe. Jennifer, uh, I, I certainly am uh, very feeling calmly and we are sharing here this space. I can feel this, this uh, much, much good uh, to feeling this space for and sharing your feelings, I, I, I can't share about uh, where I live and my places and maybe are, 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 are you, have you, do you know how to do the screen share? Yep, yes. He does. Hey, there you go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, this is a platform that allows uh, us maybe to make some events from and but I want to share this this place that is my my where I live uh, I 
Just a minute. Mm -hmm. Beautiful mountains. That's my home. That's wow, awesome. how beautiful. Wow. You're That's a lucky man. I, I come with the, this garden of everyone and sharing my garden here. Huh? Uh, I live like in 80 years, uh, like the side of, of this church that's called Flor da Montanha, that's a uh, mountain flower, and it's uh, a spiritual place that uh, we, we, uh, this is Mad Madrinha Baixinha, that was, uh, she was an Umbanda mother from Umbanda. I don't know if you, you guys are, are know what's what it is. It's from Spiritism, but with uh, uh born in Brazil, a ritual wave to calling the the guides and working with the the caboclos and preto velhos that are uh, uh, ancestors and spirits that was was alive. And here we here we we make, make daimi uh, that's a drink from the Peru, that's a spiritual uh, plant of uh, that we we uh, prepare with. Uh, this video, I want like to to share because I, that is we doing the and here I'm, I sh I was showing up and I just want to show. Who can, I am because uh, I, I have not webcam. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, Chow, but I'm interested. Uh, would that be like ayahuasca? Yes, exactly. Ah, exactly. As in the same or a different kind of sacred plant? It's the same from, uh, but was. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh, we, we from this drink from the the Amazon, uh, Master Irineu received it and created a doctrine called Santo Daime, and oh, yes. then received songs from uh, that we sing in, in this this church and yeah, everyone singing and a very music uh, spiritual leading to for us to reach but uh, I would I love to, ch to share the, about because I quite never share in this in inter internet I only you know uh, am doing this with seeds movement and creating uh, this echo view that's a community of practice and we we make some have a, a sharing funds and and introducing seeds and creating projects from Brazil, and there I create this page, and here I have a, had the initiative to to create a mapping, but we are just starting. But uh, here I I was doing this. Every mapping that I found, I, I was here to to use the Echo Village. That's it's quite close from where I live. Also, I live right here. And it's, that's my city right here. Ah. I live. Uh, it's a very beautiful mountains place. Uh -huh. And right here we are. I have uh, this market. Place that we will we'll be able to. Uh, let me see. He wants to to receive in seeds, so it's a great. Uh, we can buy food with seeds, so I can. Yes, yeah, I'm talking a lot, but uh, also we have the, this local scale movement that's mapping by regions and by here we can buy food from from the spades and creating a page for 
for the region, but I st still struggling how to use some platforms to ground these local meetings. And that's one thing that, uh, let me stop here. So one thing that I love about to, to be here and listen how these interactions that uh, make make clear about what we need is to, to creating uh, these connections, these profound connections that we share in enlisting sharings. That's a very healing. And I actually start to, to we, actually I was working with agro, agroforesting and my, my backing for, for this searching was when I start to to interact to participating of this sacred male uh, gatherings, and there I, I I feel that that I could share in and be healed by sharing. So I was here and I listened you sharing having that, and I I totally understand. And thank you so much for but also sharing and many many projects that i that i want to 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 do as uh with people like with this mindful mind mindset you know that this gener generation are i believe that we are capable to to get this and we uh, was using internet like in the immature way uh still here in brazil i think the people are just by themselves on Instagram or Facebook, but creating this, it's more, more a bubble that uh, are actually gathering this local community to, to, to participate in this, in the, the life in this, their own places. So I, I looking for it to do it in my community and with seeds, I believe in that we are scoping for what you share earlier that was that we are changing our mindset for for abundant way and we have to believe in it and have a lot of uh, resources that it's uh, it will be disposable for good hard people that shows that we are here to change and so i'm looking for maybe this trove platform that was would would be a good place for starting a local organization to make decisions in a sociocratic way and with sharing groups and that's what I'm looking to do it and I found this place here and I'm very 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 happy to thanks so much I'm so glad you came Joe thank you so much for showing us your home uh, I, I must admit I'm a little bit jealous <laughs> um, it's very, very beautiful. Um, I, I'd like to ask Marco a question. Um, have you been involved with seeds? Um, and I know you've been involved with Trove, but what can you add to this conversation? I can't really add anything about seeds except that I know it exists. I know it's a form of cryptocurrency uh, to help good things in in the world uh, apparently you if i understand correctly the little i know that when you do good work somehow you're rewarded with seeds and i i need to explore it a lot more and and it is something you know it's it's like now that we've got the the you know trove and we're still in alpha testing so it's going to be you know months yet before it it'll be even in beta testing but we're making progress but you know we we're lucky to be one of the alpha testers, and it's you know it's proving results here, Joe, with you being here. You made you really brightened my day today that it's working exactly the way it's supposed to work. And um, we need to get at some point we need to learn more about seeds, and and we could maybe do meetings here. Uh, you know if we can get somebody that's really well first on it we can pick a time and do a meeting here you know and set it up now that we have the calendar where it's going to be so easy to use 
Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to exploring all those things. Seed, seeds especially right now because so many people are talking about it. I, I have been uh, following seeds for um, longer than most. Um, and there was a time when I considered putting forward a proposal for, um, uh, and, and I don't know what, what the, the terms that they use are, but um, basically for funding um, for the Our Heart Gardens um, and, and me traveling, because there's, yes, there's the, the gardening aspect and the, um, the, the talking together and learning how to make decisions together um, aspect of our heart gardens, but there's also the spiritual aspect of it uh, that I really, that I feel is, a, is my part of what is going on. It's the a realization that uh, we are uh, guided and guarded throughout our lives by, uh, by spirit. And for, and, and I talk about that. That's what I talk about. And so uh, what I wanted to do, what I still want to do is enable my traveling from place to place so that I can highlight the places and what they're doing. Um, um, in order to uh, see, it's like Stan pointed out to me the other day, you know, there are thousands of our heart gardens that already exist and so how do we um, enable them to become more OGs than they already are uh, and and incorporate new aspects of the OGs idea into what they're doing for example um, in the garden that I go to their produce goes to the food bank or to the volunteers. And that's a really good thing. There are other gardens that only sell their produce, you know, and so they might be successful and that might be a really good thing, but maybe they could also have another offshoot where it's in the community and it is helping the people on the streets have a place to be while they're finding a place to be um, so that, uh, you know, the children and the old folks can get together and, you know, walk together and have access to each other instead of the children going to kindergartens and the old folks going and living in old folks homes separated from each other. Uh, that is just the wrong way of you know, grandparents and, and our elders have been the teachers of our children throughout history. And yet in this new, new old, this, this industrial world that we have created, that our ancestors, our more recent ancestors created between themselves, it is not honoring the humanity that lives within us. And so we've got to find a new way. I want, I would like to have seeds or something fund me in order to travel to spread the ideas and to talk about how to heal together. And I, there's a great big book that wants to be written that talks about how we do this together, how we honor the, uh, the spiritual philanthropy, as Brett Warshowski calls it, um, um, the, the gift economy, um, the seeds idea, where, at, or scale, where it is gratitudes that you're giving. Uh, that, there are so many ideas that are coming up now. And an embracing of these new ideas is necessary for us to figure out which ones we want to adopt and which ones work for us. 
and maybe seeds is one. And Marco, yeah, I'll be here when you uh, bring that into in, into the conversation. Dot C's. Awesome. awesome, awesome. Yeah, we're Chris and I have been you know going back and forth on uh, you know trying to set up a, a, a bunch of different meetings. You know, one on sustainability. That is just uh, the the idea I had was just. That's it. Everything sustainable. Meet. Start with you know one meeting. See where it goes. Leave it open to expanding and to individual points of it. But but first off, just everybody bring a bring an idea that you can use in your daily life that's sustainable, and share that idea. And because that's what we, what so many people feel helpless in this whole situation we're in. And if we can share just those little things that we can do on our own, and we know the same way that um, every bad thing chips away and be becomes a big bad thing, every good thing starts with little things that make a big good thing. So. I found something I can offer into that a sustainability practice that I just uh, realized today. Uh, we had last night, we had a flood in our house. Uh, luckily, we live upstairs. The flood downstairs was caused by a plugged pipe. And there was no tenants down there. So it was, they're moving in this weekend. Uh, but what it required me to do was not use the drain in the, uh, the kitchen sink. And so, oh my God, what do you do? Okay, so I happen to have two big um, containers uh, for the foot baths um, that I've been doing recently. And so I put one of those big containers in each of the double sink and I did dishes with you using the containers. And what I realized is how much water goes down that sink when we do not put a bucket in there. And so I might actually continue using buckets. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Um, no, uh, go ahead. I don't want to interrupt you. No, you just interrupted at exactly the right time. Well, there is actually there's several like systems where you can like even buy uh, like what you need to use, take your hand washing sink in the bathroom and that water just goes down into a tank under the sink and that water then flushes the toilet when you flush the toilet. So you're not using, you're, you're reusing the hand washing water to flush the toilet. In, in Japan right now, they, I just saw a picture and I didn't save it. I don't know how I'm going to find it. But they literally, you know, when you have the, the toilet that has the tank on the back, they have, they turned the, that, the lid to that into a hand washing sink. So that it goes straight into the tank and then flushes the toilet. And, and there's so many different ways that that can be done. Uh, my mom, when we were, were on the farm, she never did get it, but she wanted, uh, and of course now with animal agriculture, it's going to be, things are a little different, uh, not wanting to do that. But she said, you know, if, if we had like a garbage disposal in the sink, which she would never use in a million years, but we ground up the food and it went through a pipe that fed directly into the pig's trough. Wouldn't well, that be handy? Well, now the idea, one of the ideas that I'm working with, and it's not a hundred percent original. I mean, bits and pieces from here and there, but we can do the same thing, you know, for biogas generating, you know, because that's what you need. What they use, you know, they'll they'll take a, a, a sink garbage disposal, but they do this, you know, like outside, and then it goes into a bucket, and you have to call the bucket up there. We could just directly pipe that, you know, the feed for your biogas generator. The dishwater is good for them. They get calories out of that. Any kind of biomass can go into 
a, a, a methane digester and give you cooking gas, gas to heat your hot water. You, you know, even if it's even if it does so much, you know, if and the larger they are, and there's a lot of a lot of innovation in biogas technology right now. So so again, it's like you would just it would be everything is normal. Like if you have something, you just need a lever that says, okay, this time I want the water to go into the biogas, this time it can go through the down the drain. And and you know, that was my mom wanted that uh fifth. 50 something years ago. So, so this is, this is, this is the idea. This is the, the anything sustainable, uh, uh, meaning that we just did it. We just did a test. I've got some noise in the background. That's why I'm not uh, speaking. So if anybody else would like to uh, speak Feel free. I want to share, I uh, have a place where I live that's called uh, uh, Monge Louis would be Light Hands. Uh, it's, a, it's a house that we built with, with our hands, with uh, 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 dirt and, and, and that, that way with bio construction, we made a, a, a home. And there, or the older one, the elders teach us about the, the sacred meds, medicines of, of plants and the, the medicines from our, our ancestors. And a lot of good projects like that. And they are not running be, because of the, the not founding, not fu uh, funds, because they have not funds to, to do in. It's, it's one of the projects that, that uh, could be. Uh, you know, people who, who, who can teach children of the communities and be rewarded by doing that. And uh, how we can do this a way for uh, a, a, re a true way for, 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 for people spread their, their knowledge and, and their, their love and doing that by all what they has in what, what you have to share. It's, it's a good everyone uh, agreed with that so why not to fund fund this these people you know and my my place where i live money just don't come in you know and very difficult because people like me that uh, have to work and 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 not have time to to do what they, they love what love and to be in unity with their own community has to to, to work in something and not to make your own job, you know. I want to make the, the work that I want to, to, to work and could be a new way. And we need, we need new ways and how we can create jobs and reward people who are creating their own jobs, you know. And, and yeah, I was thinking that I was, was thinking you know, to share. Thank you, Joel. And I have one more quick thing here. You know, when you have an onion and you cook with your onions, you know, you peel it and you dice it and you cut the root and you do whatever you do with it. Well, my mom came up with, you know, she said, seems like such a waste. So she developed a way where you peel the onion and then you cut the onion up, leaving the root part intact, you cut around it and I'll, I'll have to put together a demonstration video. But every onion has in its center. Oh, that's not going to show up. Hold on, I got to change my background. Please. This is. Yeah, every onion has in its center root and the little baby onion. This last onion had two. Sometimes they'll have three or four or five. And you just take this and you plant it and you grow more onion. Yeah, I've, I've seen the reusing of your, your vegetables. I've seen that with celery and um, 
and I think it's a little piece of genius, you know. Uh, use your projects twice. I, I love that. That's great. And and um, onions are one of the easiest ones. You know, celery and some of these other things are a little finicky, but but you can do it with lettuce too, cabbage. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can do that with. And uh, yeah, so. Onward, onward and upward and stand on each other's shoulders. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, I, so I, I'm watching the chat and um, I, I see that Joe has uh, about 2000 people in his district in Lumiere. Oh and no, I, I was thinking uh, Shimena was uh, uh, a question from my community where I live in. And from there, I think it's uh, 200 only for the people who participate in, in this uh, church that I, that I, I are a part of. Yeah. But from my Lumia district, it's uh, like two or three thousand people okay. who live. In Hello, Joao. I was asking about your community in the but it's a big community, two hundred people getting along. Very yeah, well. many many sure. don't don't live together, but because people travel just for 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 getting these rituals that when when happening. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, because of the pandemic, we are uh, stopped the the working uh, with spiritual works there. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'm missing a lot. But uh, uh, Central Daimo. Um, I, and I'm sorry, I don't know the exact pronunciation or, or the spelling of it or anything, but I'm familiar with the, the, the term because when I was in Rotterdam, I met a young fellow from Germany and he was involved with them. Um, and so this is, a, it's a, a well-known uh, organization. Um, your, your, um, your, the, the woman that uh, is your, your spiritual leader um, is is known uh, in more than just Brazil. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and the songs are sung in more than just Brazil. It's good. Yes, yeah. I totally agree. Uh, it's a doctrine actually that uh, covers for for a very very strong way we 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 make observers about ourselves and we can hide from from our own conscious and that's very strong way to to connect with nature mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i had the uh, experience of ayahuasca when i was in rotterdam in in holland and it was a very opening experience. I, I feel that I was blessed with um, um, a, 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 I was lucky. <laughs> it was not a hard experience for me, uh, although I did watch others oh, deeply challenged. And uh, I'm very grateful uh, for the experience, um, partly because it gives me a, a level of awareness of other people's experiences. Uh, and um, so, I, and I feel there's a lot of things in my, in my past that have been like that, I, things that I've experienced that few other people have had uh, the experience so that uh, the few that have and are affected by it, uh, I, I have the ear yeah. to hear with. Uh, I can hear them from a point of, um, from a perspective of knowing what they're talking about. Uh, and ayahuasca is, is one, and I'm glad for that experience. Gaia has been very, very generous with me and the experiences that I've had. Um, 
I would like at this point to invite you to go with your breath inside your chest. Arrange your body around your chest so you are comfortable, able to breathe, Breathe into the count of four and hold your breath for four. Breathe out for four and hold your breath for four. In for four, hold for four. Out for four. Hold for four. This pattern is called square breathing. As you go inside your heart that is inside your chest, find a comfortable corner and take a seat. Know that Gaia is sitting with you. And your ancestors are there. And your guides. While there are many people, many entities at your fire, there is lots of room. And you're all comfortable with each other. And someone walks by with a tray and offers you fruit. And when you sink your teeth into the fruit, it is sweet and juicy and trickles out your mouth at the corners. And you lick it off. And it's so sweet. And as you sit in quiet contemplation of the fire at the center of your heart, allow yourself to move into another place. In this place, it's a garden. There are many growing plants. This is where the fruit came from. In amongst the garden plants, you see people And as you move through the garden, they hail you and say, hi, thank you for coming. And they offer you things to do. And you say, I'll come back. I'll see you later. I'd love to help. And there is your favorite fruit tree. And you reach up and you grab one for yourself and you thank the tree. Thank you. 
for your bounty. You are a wonderful example of fulfilling your purpose in life. We can all learn from you and your unconditional love that you give in the form of fruit. Thank you, tree. Thank you. And you walk on. And your path brings you back to the place in your heart where you can always be yourself and speak with yourself and your soul and your ancestors. This is a place that is always here for you. And you are always safe here. The gardens outside your heart, that's our heart garden. We are creating them in our reality, the shared reality that holds us all, that Gaia has provided for us. This is the fun part, creating our heart gardens together with friends around the world. Thank you for coming. Come back again. Bless you and all you do. Go in peace and go in power. Come on back. Come on back. Thank you. Hmm. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Hmm. Joe, thank you so much for coming. So much. Thank you, Marco, Chimena. Thank you so much for coming.